Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'll be converting this XP4205 into a sublimation printer, so let's get into it. So a little over a year ago, I did a conversion video on an XP4105 that I grabbed right off the shelf and turned into a sublimation printer. It became one of my most watched videos and still use that XP4105 to this day. So I thought maybe it would be a good idea to do another video on a newer model. So I went back to my local Walmart and grabbed this XP4205. And that's a pretty popular printer and as of March 2024, you can still find them pretty cheap. However, if you read the reviews, one of the major drawbacks is the amount of ink that the printer uses and the high cost of the replacement ink. So to get around that, I'm going to be installing chipless firmware so that I can use sublimation ink. But if you aren't into sublimation, the chipless firmware will allow you to use that cheaper bulk refill ink. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have all the items that I'm going to need for this conversion. I'm going to need refillable cartridges. The ink that I'm going to be using, which is sublimation ink, but again, you don't have to use sublimation ink. You can use that regular refill ink. A USB printer cable. Now, the printer does not come with one of these, so if you need to, go ahead and grab one while you're at the store buying the printer. Some syringes. Gloves. And it's always a good idea to have some of these shop towels around. Before I open the printer, I'm going to fill and prime the cartridges. Once I fill the cartridge up with ink, I'm going to plug the vent hole and insert a syringe into the fill hole going to pull up on the syringe until I feel some resistance and release the plunger. It'll fall on its own and force ink into the center chamber of the cartridge and that's what's going to prime it. Now without this step the cartridges will be filled but they won't be primed and the ink won't be able to flow out of the ink cartridges properly. I also remove the chip holder and the chip because I don't need them and leaving them in can possibly damage the pins on the CSI seaboard. Now once the cartridges are good to go I'll go ahead and get it out of the box and set the printer up normally by following the start here guide. I remove the tape and I plug it in. I select my language and then following the instructions on the printer I'll insert the cartridges that came with the printer. Now while the printer initializes I'll load in some copy paper for the nozzle check and alignment and after the initialization and the alignment is complete, I'll head over to the Epson website and download the printer driver. Alright, so now it's time to set up that printer driver. So the first thing I need to do is go to the Epson website. Uh, and at the top here in the search bar, I'm just going to type in 4205, which is my printer's uh, model number. So and on either one of these XP4205s, either the certified, renew, or just the regular one here, you can just type, uh, click on the support. And once you're on the uh, the next page, just select your operating system. In my case is Windows 10 64 bit, so I'm gonna click on that. Once I select my operating system, it's gonna uh, recommend that you download the Drivers and Utility Combo Package Installer. I don't use that, I just use the driver here. Um, with the Combo Package Installer, you get some extra uh, extra utilities and software here from Epson that I just don't use so I'm just gonna select the uh, printer driver here but you can do the combo package installer if you want to I'm just gonna click on download here I'm gonna download it to my desktop alright so once it's completed I'm gonna go to my desktop and here it is so what I want to do now is just double click this so I can start to start to run the installer here I'm gonna click on yes here and I don't want to set this as my default printer, so I'm going to untick this. If you want to, you can select this, um, but I'm not going to, so I'm going to click OK here. My language is English. Click OK. I'm going to click Agree here. OK. And it's going to ask me if I want to set it up via the USB connection or a network connection. I'm going to be setting up chipless firmware via USB anyways here, so I'm just going to uh, select USB connection. I don't have it plugged in so once I click OK here it's going to prompt me to make sure it's powered on and plugged in. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in now. Alright once I plug it in it's pretty much just going to find it and and be done. Um, let's see. There it is. Alright so now that the printer's uh, done installing the, the printer driver uh, I can click OK here. And if I go down here to the notification area in the taskbar, 
should see there's one of my printers here and here's the 4200 series so you click on that and it should get all my options for the 4200 series printer so now that the printer set up I can go ahead and set up the chipless firmware now in order for me to install chipless firmware on this particular model it needs to be in update mode so to do that I'm gonna have to turn the power off and then power it back up by holding down the cancel button the down arrow the left arrow then hold the power button down till I see the program update mode on the screen good now I can head over to inkchip.net and download the chipless firmware alright so once we got our printer and firmware update mode first thing you want to do is go to inkchip.net here then we're gonna go over here to soft up here we're gonna scroll down to our model in our case it's gonna be the XP 4200 4205 here so we're gonna click on download for the firmware I'm just gonna download it to my desktop as I usually do I'm gonna download the activation same place now uh, with Chrome it has it blocked as suspicious activity for the activation but you can right click on it and click on keep and that'll allow you to uh, continue downloading it so that's just something built into uh, Chrome which is the browser that I'm using not sure if it does that on um, on Microsoft Edge or Firefox or anything else but just right click it or do what you got to do to get around it so you can download it gives off a false positive as a virus so can go ahead and uh, close this out and now I have both of my files here on the desktop all right so first thing I want to do is uh, double click on the uh, the firmware here so I'm just going to double click on it now I have pzip installed which is a compression software suite so I'm going to be able to extract it with that but if you have the standard uh, extractor that's built into Windows you can use that or WinRAR uh, is another uh, free one um, as well as pzip so you can use any of those tools to extract it once I do that I'm just going to extract it here to my desktop <clears throat> so now I have this folder here that just extracted I can move this back over here so what I want to do now, um, again, the printers and firmware update mode or an update mode. Uh, I'm going to double click on that. I'm just going to double click on the uh, the firmware here. Now I like to right click and run as administrator. I don't know, it's just something I always do. It's a habit of mine. So I'm going to click on yes here to continue. Then it's going to launch the, uh, the updater here. So I'm going to click on next. I'm going to click on I agree here. Click on next again. I'm going to click on next again. It's going to come up with USB unknown as I have my uh, printer connected to a USB cable connected to my computer. Again, it has to be a Windows based computer. It can't be a Mac uh, or an Apple product. It, it won't update on those. Um, so we go ahead and click on start here and we're just going to go ahead and proceed with the firmware update. We're just going to let it go. It's going to get all the way up to 100% and then it's going to tell you to uh, wait for the printer to turn off automatically and right now I have the uh, camera pointed at the printer here so I'm just going to let it uh, take its time and and finish updating okay so the printer just got done updating um, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, you it, it won't turn off automatically on it so it'll just say that it's finished um, or maybe it might turn off on its own I've never waited that long you can just go ahead and click on the cancel button and it'll turn it off and then you can just go ahead and click on the power button and it should turn back on so now you're out of update mode and it should give you a home screen 
and tell you that there's a firmware update available if you've already connected yours to the Wi-Fi or to your Wi-Fi network. So once it gets uh, the Wi-Fi signal here, it should inform me that there's a update available. That's connected man, it should give me a Wi-Fi. Uh, it should give me a firmware update. Reminder. There it is. All right, so I'm just gonna click on no later and then click on dismiss. If you was to click on the, uh, the other option of, of just dismiss, it'll automatically go into the firmware update. So we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and go to our settings menu. Then we're going to scroll down to firmware update. And you can see I2 zero uh, two into that is the firmware that you want to be on. If you on any other firmware, you need to uh, go back and reinstall the chipless firmware again. So what I'm going to do is turn this notification to off. That way, when the computer turns, uh, when the printer, then that way when the printer turns on, it won't give you that nag screen to go ahead and update the firmware. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the home button here, and we should be good to go now. So now we need to uh, activate the the firmware. So I'm going to keep it on that screen and go to my activation. So first thing I want to do is. Uh, Go to my home screen, uh, my desktop here. I can finish, click on finish and close that out. I'm gonna click on activation here. And again, I'm gonna extract it with uh, pzip. So I'm gonna extract that right to my home screen or my desktop here. I'll move this out of the way. So now I'm gonna run the activation. So again, I'm gonna right click run as administrator click on yes here and the beginning it's going to tell you that it's downloading the update and once it's complete you click on this uh okay on this message here telling you that it's updated and it's going to close down and you need to relaunch it so we'll go over here activate it again and then it's going to tell you that the current version is the latest and you can go ahead and click on activate online and then it's going to ask for your sn or your serial number now to get this code, you're gonna have to pay for it from inkchip.net. So let's go back to inkchip.net and we're gonna go to the buy button here at the top. And then it's gonna ask uh, for your um, your model series here, your series here. We're doing the XP series. So we're gonna go to printer model and we're gonna go to XP 4200 4205 here. All right, so it looks like it's $40. We're gonna click on add to cart. All right, so once the cart updates, you can go ahead and click on the shopping cart icon up here at the top, and it's gonna have your item here in the checkout header in the cart. So uh, this is a chipless firmware key for a XP 4200 4205. And the coupon, we're going to type in the word Gorilla. I hit apply coupon. And what that's going to do is it's going to save you a total of 10% off at the checkout. So it's going to be $40 minus the four, it'll be $36. And then you proceed to checkout. And what will happen is you'll get a email with a key in it. So we're going to go back to our activation program and we're going to enter our key. So I already got my key. I'm going to go ahead and enter it here. I'm going to click on OK. All right. So what will happen is the printer is uh, shutting down right now and it's going to go ahead and restart. Uh, if it doesn't restart, uh, oh, yeah, it's going to restart on its own. So. If it doesn't restart, you can just hit the power button. All right, so then we're going to click OK, and it should be chipless now. So 
to check if it's chipless, we need to go ahead and install those cartridges that we set up at the beginning. So we'll go ahead and get that together now. Oh, but before we do that, what we need to do is uh, copy this activation code down here. So what'll happen is uh, you'll get an activation code after you activate. And in the event that you uh, accidentally update your firmware, you can have this activation code and you can reinstall your firmware to your printer without having to purchase it again. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this down and go back to my desktop here. And I'm just gonna create a new, um, a new document. So we'll go uh, text document and we're gonna call this activation code 4200, we'll do XP. 4200 so then we're going to double click on it paste it in there and then we'll click on save as or save yeah we'll just save it here and there we go so i'll take this i'll throw it in there and then i'll throw this whole thing into my junk file up here at the top so now that the uh the printer's been uh has a chipless firmware installed on it I'll just go ahead and delete these files here uh, get them off I can delete this activation as well alright so we're good to go oh it's still open so let's go ahead and close this out alright so we can delete that out so now the chipless firmware should be installed I'll go ahead and uh, install those um, cartridges that we already filled up earlier and then we can do some test prints so now that the chipless firmware is installed i'll go back to the printer and install the refill cartridges that i set up earlier i'll make sure the vent hole is unplugged before installing the refill cartridges because leaving both the holes plugged will create a vacuum and the ink will remain stuck inside of the cartridges i'll go to the maintenance menu and select ink cartridge replacement and install the refill cartridges Then I'll run a power clean to help flush the ink we use to set up the printer out and push the sublimation ink in. This will also help push any of that air that was introduced into the ink system out after the cartridge change. Once I get a good nozzle check with the new ink, I'll head over to Photoshop and throw together a test license plate. I'll print it out and get it over to the press. Now I've also started making these toppers for the popular 40 ounce Stanley tumbler, so I'm going to make one of those as well. All right, it looks like everything is good to go with this printer and now we are done. Now, if this video was able to help you out, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to use the code GORILLA for 10% off at the checkout at inkchip.net. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. Until next time, good luck and good night.